Good evening. Welcome to our September Board of Trustees meeting. Uh, what are you looking if for? You, Jessica, can you do a roll roll call? Yes. Call us to order. Yeah. Rodney G. Here. Doris Graham. Here. Craig Larson. Here. Mary Lupke. Here. Kevin M. Martin. Here. Ann Marshall. Here. Nicole Robinson. Here. Jessica, can you do This is the uh, month, the time when we do a tax hearing, so that will be right at the beginning of our meeting. I'd like a motion to recess the regular board meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Good. A public hearing is held in accordance with section 67.100 revised statutes of Missouri, which requires each public subdivision to hold a public hearing after appropriate public notice prior to fixing its property rates, tax rates for the fiscal year. Appropriate notice for the hearing was published in accordance with Missouri section 610.020 as amended. I will now ask Ms. Sherry Kiefer to come forward and give a presentation regarding the setting of our tax rate. Sherry? Thank you. Tonight's presentation is intended to provide the annual snapshot of the tax rate setting process for the tax year 2023. 2023 is a reassessment year and did require us to complete a preliminary tax rate calculation in early April. As already mentioned, the notice of public hearing requires posting in advance of the public hearing. We met this requirement by posting notice of this hearing in the post St. Louis Post-Dispatch on the college's public website and at our campus locations. House Bill 1392 establishes the deadline for the college to set a tax levy as not later than October 1st. However, since we levy taxes in other jurisdictions, we have to comply with their deadlines as well. So therefore, we provided Franklin County with a preliminary tax rate by their September 1st deadline, and then we'll go back and submit our final one after the hearing tonight. The maximum authorized levy is the most recent voter approved rate, which for St. Louis Community College happened in August 2021 when Proposition R was successfully passed. Therefore, 27.87 cents on the $100 of assessed valuation is the current maximum rate allowed under Senate Bill 711. St. Louis Community College tax rate is applied to property values in the taxing entities of St. Louis City, St. Louis County, and portions of Jefferson and Franklin County. Here's a brief 10-year history of the assessed valuations and the tax rate set by the college. In the interest of time, I won't go into much detail here, but want to point out just a couple of items. Real property is only assessed in odd years, so you'll see larger changes in the assessed values, the middle column, for the odd or reassessment years. The even years still show slight changes due to increases in personal property and new construction, but usually not as large. 2022 was a bit of an exception to this. Last year was the largest percent increase in assessed value in an even year that we've seen since 2002, even larger than some reassessment years. If you recall, car prices skyrocketed last year, which led to quite an increase in the personal property valuation. The new construction was also a lot higher in 2022 than we've seen in recent years. You can also see that our tax rate tends to decrease on those odd reassessment years that have a large growth in assessed values because of the Hancock Amendment that limits that revenue growth. The exception to this, of course, is 2021, in which case we had the new voter approved rate, so we didn't see that decrease. The $40.4 billion in assessed values for tax year 2022 represents a $4.8 billion increase or 13.57 increase from tax year 2022. The Hancock Amendment, Missouri Constitution Article 10, Section 22, requires the adjustment of tax levy to limit revenue growth on property that existed in both the current and previous year. Basically, we subtract the new construction from the current year assessed values and apply the previous year tax rate ceiling. For 2023, we were limited to a 5% growth on that revenue since our actual growth and the certified CPI both exceeded the Missouri Revised Statute maximum allowance. This growth limitation results in a decrease to our allowed tax levy for 2023. 
The Missouri State Auditor's website calculator is required to be used when submitting assessed evaluation data. It takes into account the voter approved rate, the Hancock Amendment, assessment growth, CPI, and allows a maximum tax rate levy for 2023 for us of 26.19 cents per $100 of assessed valuation. This represents a decrease from our tax rate of last year, and it is recommended by the administration that the 26.19 cent tax rate be approved. Here's the 10 year history of the assessed valuations in tax rate, including the proposed 2023 rate, and shows that it decreased by just over 6% from last year's rate. Even with the voter approved eight cent increase in 2021, St. Louis Community College remains in the bottom half of the tax rates levied by the community colleges in Missouri. The lowest in 2022 was St. Charles Community College at 19.02 cents for $100 of assessed value. Metropolitan Community College in Kansas City was also below St. Louis Community College at 20.28 cents. Mineral Area College continues to be the highest at 46.08 cents. Here you can see the 12 community colleges in the state and how we compare based on pro forma information from the state auditor's office. Data for St. Charles, Metropolitan, and East Central were not yet available on the tax rate system on the Missouri State Auditor's Office website. Rates applied by the State Auditor's Office for tax year 2023 as of last week shows Ozarks with the lowest rate at 18.71 cents, followed by Three Rivers at 23.3 cents and St. Louis Community College at 26.19 cents. The highest rate is at Mineral Area College at 46.08 cents. Based on the change in assessed values, several other schools were close to or limited to the same 5% revenue growth limit that we were due to healthy growth in assessed values. As you can see in that percent change, while we were the largest, there's several others that exceeded or were right at 5%. We're very fortunate to see continued development in our district and increases in assessed values. You can see that even before the large increases in 2021, local taxes have been comprising a bigger and bigger portion of our revenue budget, shown on this slide as that purple section at the bottom. Our tax revenue doubled from 51.7 million in 2002 to 103.7 million last year. The recommended 2023 tax rate of 26.19 cents will produce an estimated 105.9 million of local tax revenue. If the proposed tax rate is adopted, we expect to see an increase of about 1.7 million in tax revenues because of new constructions and improvements. Since this is a reassessment year, majority of our increase is actually due to reassessment. I apologize that there's a typo on this slide. The 5% increase from reassessment is actually about 4.9 million and not 4.5 million, but it is that same 5%, which should sound familiar since that's what the growth cap was limited to since CPI and our actual assessed values growth was larger than that. This shows in a bit clearer way that the local tax revenue as a percent of overall revenue to the district has been increasing since 2015. To conclude, I'd like to present an overview of the tax rate impact on a homeowner. As the chart depicts, with the decrease of the college's tax rate, there will be a slight decrease to the tax a homeowner pays, assuming that the home is appraised at the same amount. This will obviously fluctuate with individual home appraisals, and homeowners may or may not actually see a decrease to the tax they're paying to St. Louis Community College. Tax year 2025 will be the next general reassessment year, since this occurs every other year. This concludes my presentation on the 2023 property tax rate recommendation, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Board members, do you have any questions? Just one quick. What was the um, projected amount of increased revenue in the budget that was approved in June compared to what it's 6.9 million or whatever you said the number was? Um, we had projected about 104 million in the budget. And so what we're showing here, the 105.9, so it's about maybe 1.5 million that wasn't accounted for. And will that go towards Prop R projects or where were those, or we don't know where in the budget those will be, <coughs> that additional million some dollars will go yet. I mean, at this point we haven't, it's not in the budget. We also have to take into account that this is expecting 100% payment of the property taxes. And we know that we don't actually receive all of that, so. Thank you. 
Anything else? I think I've commented before, when you look at the different rates in different colleges, uh, you can kind of see that the St. Louis Community College is really fortunate to have a high assessed valuation in our service area. And with the passage of Prop R, they're very strongly behind the college and the work that we're doing and, and providing the funding to do that. It's quite different if you're down in the mineral, min, mineral area where you don't have much assessed value, have a smaller service area. Sometimes they're serving a lot of students who don't live in their service area and have to rely heavily on tuition. So it's, it's kind of unfair in some ways to compare is what I'm trying to say. Uh, probably better to compare us to uh, Kansas City. Pretty similar scenario there. Little, little explanation for anybody who'd want it, and you can correct me if you see that differently. But. So, we will come back to this issue, but first let me ask if there are any citizens who want to address this issue as a part of the tax hearing. So there was a citizen that submitted a written request and has asked me to read it into the record. Okay. This is from Ty DeFratis, who is a veteran, student, and taxpayer. I want to point out how the STLCC Board of Trustees, the Chancellor, and leadership are not transparent or held responsible for the lack of accuracy and transparency expected of a higher education organization. On slide 10 of their presentation, with a chart of assessed values, they list three colleges as unavailable as of 9-2023. I found all of the inf information on each school's website. East Central 2023 assessed value of 2.23 with a change of 2.8%, a proposed operating tax rate of 0.3551, and a debt service levy of 0 0.0990. Metropolitan 2023 assessed a value of 25.66 for a 16.9% change and a proposed tax rate of 0 0.1780. St. Charles 2023 assessed value of 11.09 with a change of 4.9, a proposed operating tax rate of 0 0.1510 and debt retirement of 0 0.0398. It is improper to state that it was the fifth lowest among the colleges because it is not an accurate comparison. Each college has different factors that do not allow for a proper comparison. I also want the taxpayers to investigate how this money is spent. The chancellors and leadership salaries. What is the ratio of administration to faculty and students? The administration's vanity and pet projects, like best places to work, and the 455 million STLCC transformed. Should the project be smaller? Time will tell the success of the transformation of STLCC. The school has continually seen a reduction in attendance numbers. The way STLCC Board of Trustees and Leadership waste taxpayer money, very little is used to help students. Please pay attention to how they spend the narratives and numbers. Look at their spending on lawyers, consultants, and programs. They have a marketing and communications department of approximately 13 people to help shape the narrative. Watch the contradictions in the board meeting presentations. Thank you. That was thank you to you, Jessica. Any other citizens here to comment? Okay. No one wishes, no one else wishes to be heard. I would like a motion to adjourn the hearing and reconvene the regular board meeting. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are now back in our regular meeting. So I would like to welcome guests that might be with us tonight and look forward to a a good discussion about a number of topics tonight. Are there citizens that want to address a uh, item that's on the board agenda? The individual who was going to attend is no longer attending for the section. Okay. Thank you. Because I thought I thought there was one. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll accept the motion to adopt the agenda, uh, or you can also make a motion to revise the agenda as it's been presented. Make a motion to adopt the agenda as as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the motion as it's presented. Any other comments from board members? I'll take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Take a motion to accept the minutes as they've been presented to us. So moved. Second. Second. As you look at the minutes, does anyone have a revision that they'd like to uh, discuss or suggest? 
If not, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of approving the minutes as uh, presented. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. We'll have a recognition of students and staff accomplishments. Thank you, Bill. Good afternoon, Chairman Larson, Chancellor Pittman, trustees, guests, faculty, staff. Tonight we are recognizing a faculty member for musical achievement, both in the class and on stage. Jerry Myers, professor of music at Merrimack, received one of the highest honors given to choral directors in Missouri. He received the Jeff Sandquist Presidential Award of Excellence from the Missouri Choral Directors Association. The award is given for contributing extraordinary service, dedication to the MCDA, as well as intellectual integrity, commitment to excellence, and high musical achievement both in teaching and for performance on stage. This is not an annual award. Jerry also received the MCDA Legacy Bronze Certificate in recognition of more than 25 years of service to the organization. Jerry has taught at STLCC for 15 years. He serves as the Director of Choral Activities and he's the Music Program Coordinator. He also directs the Merrimack Concert Choir and Chamber Singers. Jerry is the Faculty Advisor for the Merrimack Chapter of Phi Theta Kappa and is the Honors Program Coordinator. Outside of STLCC, Myers serves as the executive director of Crescendo Youth Choirs. So we would like to congratulate Jerry for his service to the MCDA, as well as enriching the lives of STLCC students through music. And I believe Jerry is here tonight for his recognition. <laughs> I want to make just a small editorial comment. I had a, an opportunity. I was on, on Merrimack's campus for the groundbreaking and ran into Jerry and we were talking just briefly and I, I relayed the conversation the board had had about how important fine arts, the music yeah. is or are, those various programs are, and that the board stands solidly behind them clarifying not that he even raised an issue but clarifying that as we're pushing into pathways which we will continue that doesn't mean that's the only things that we do I and mean, we've got lots of adults we've got lots of people that love programs that that we've had for a long time so and jerry you've done great work you've even written music that we you sing or you have students sing at our graduation appreciate appreciate all you've done for us thank you another round of applause please <laughs> Mr. Chair, I had one thing. You oh, can. Two things. So, yeah, Dr. Myers, I, I, if you go to commencement, you always see him there leading the choral ensemble. We appreciate that. And he also does a tremendous amount of work for the Missouri Community College Association. So not to mention all the other things he does. So we, we appreciate Jerry and uh, all he continues to do for our students. Thank you. And that concludes tonight's presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Our uh, second uh, recognition presentation is a discussion about Veterans Affairs. So who is going to introduce this? Uh, Dr. LaShonda Boone, you want to come up and lead us off? Or Regina? Mm -hmm. You two decide. <laughs> How about if we tag team? <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Chairman Lawson, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Pittman, faculty, staff, students, and guests. Again, I am LaShanda Boone, and I serve as the Vice President of Multicultural Student Services and the Chief Student Affairs Officer at uh, Forest Park. Uh, before we begin speaking about Veteran Affairs, I think it's uh, only appropriate that I first give kudos to Regina Blackshear, Dr. Stephanie Leonard, and our uh, school certifying officials. We just recently went through our VA compliance audit and we went through that audit successfully uh, with no findings. Wow. <laughs> veteran affairs helping students, student veterans succeed. So our organizational chart. 
Uh, at this time, Veteran Affairs falls now under my purview. Uh, our district manager has been identified and hired. Our district manager is Dr. Stephanie Leonard. She previously served as our Assistant Veteran Affairs Coordinator. Stephanie is a 24-year veteran retiring in 2013 as an Information Systems Supervisor and Chief Warrant Officer in the Missouri Army National Guard. She honorably served in Kuwait and Iraq, logging over 2,400 miles within the Sunni Triangle doing combat operations in Operation Iraq, Iraqi Freedom in 2003. She is the first woman in the state of Missouri to be awarded the Bronze Star for her service in Iraq. She is also the first woman and person of color to graduate from the Warren Officer Candidate School collaboration between Fort Leonard Wood and Fort Rucker. Stephanie received her baccalaureate from St. Louis University, a master's from Eden, Eden Theological Seminary, and a doctorate from Emory University. That's an impressive bio. It is. Yeah. Almost made me look good. <laughs> <laughs> Under Stephanie's purview, we have the Assistant Veteran Affairs Coordinator. That position is currently vacant because, as I shared, Stephanie has moved up into the district manager uh, position, but at the very same time, the position is being advertised and we are collecting resumes for a great candidate. Um, the veteran, veteran, the Assistant Veteran Affairs Coordinator also slides under the purview of our Assistant Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs, Ms. Regina Blackshear, because that person is also responsible, again, for uh, our student, our school certifying officials, which fall under financial aid, so it only makes sense that that person lines up to Regina. We also have four student ambassadors uh, under Stephanie's purview, or under the assistant, I'm sorry, purview Stephanie's now until we hire the assistant, and that's because we have an, a veteran student ambassador on every campus, and that is me. I'm going to say the next slide, and it's in my hand. <laughs> student veteran data, student veterans uh, data. We have 482 student veterans or dependents of veterans identified. Florida, by numbers, Florissant Valley has 86 student veterans and or dependents. Forest Park has 227. Merrimack has 120. Uh, Wildwood has 10. And we have 39 veteran students or dependents currently seeking uh, an education or complete an educational goal from St. Louis Community College. So what are you doing for these students? Well, Chairman Lawson, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Student Veteran <And> Services. <laughs> but I, I figured you would. So. <laughs> veteran Services uh, now has a veteran advocate. We have an event calendar. Uh, one, of the, one of the events that we have on that calendar right now is at the 80th anniversary of D-Day invasion. The students will be students or participants in this 10-day, will, will, will go on a 10-day study abroad program in England and France and will follow the Allied soldiers' footsteps and commemorate the 80th anniversary of World War II D-Day invasion of Normandy, the largest military operation event ever organized. We have district-wide training on military-connected topics. Uh, for our Professional Development Day, Stephanie will be providing information on green zone training. For those of you who are wondering what this green zone training is, it's for faculty and staff who wish to learn more about the military connected student experience. The goals are to train college community members to know more about military connected students' issues and concerns and identify individuals available to assist this population. Upon completion, participants can lead a simple a sympathetic ear and help the student veteran identify and connect with appropriate resources. We want to ensure that our faculty, staff, and other students understand veteran students sitting in their class and how to assist them be successful. Student veteran success events will offer be, also be offering veterans recognition program. Of course, I've already mentioned our veteran ambassadors. We have our student veteran clubs on every campus, benefit assistance, and then my favorite, we have on-campus resource centers on every campus at this time. What are on-campus resource centers? Well, Trustee G, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the, student, the student veteran resource centers offer our students their own space, right? They have study areas. The space offers study areas, comfortable furniture, furniture lounge area with music and movies. They'll be able to enjoy coffee, tea, and snacks. There's a refrigerator in every space and a microwave will soon be in every space. There'll be, there's a resource library with books and information on veterans programs, both on and off campus for, for our student veterans. 
board games, access to campus student veteran certifying officials because they'll have some dedicated time in those spaces to meet with the veterans and much, much more. We also want to make sure our student veterans are aware of our wraparound services. So there will be some services that will be highlighted for each one of our student veterans. And that's tutoring, child care, scholarships, retention and specialty programs, i.e. BMA or Black Male Achievers, Tech Academy, Sisters in Tech, etc. Counseling services, our access office, which offers disability support services, TRIO, which is student support services, and student advocacy, he's our student advocacy and resource center. I'll entertain at this time any questions you may have. Board members. Thank you for the presentation. One quick question that we've heard uh, from some students over time is just scheduling and credits. I was just wondering if we've been able to address kind of, I don't know all the details, but just knowing if we've addressed some of the scheduling issues and concerns to align with veteran financial aid. Sure, I can address that one. So that particular program is over with, the VRAP program, so we won't have those scheduling issues. We do also have had the opportunity, we meet with our student success advisors. They're aware of the benefits of what the student schedules need to look like. So veterans are meeting with those student success advisors when they're putting together their schedule and developing their benchmarks before they're certified for their benefits. Thank you. Okay. Are the counseling services through an external resource, or do we have a resource on campus? We currently utilize our internal counselors that we have on campuses, okay. but we also provide after-hour services. So there's a reference sheet that if the veteran comes in and they need some help, they'll know where to go if there's after-hours. Okay, thank you. I'm glad to hear that because of some of our board members, there was a certain man who would come and he was very concerned about and very detailed on how he was not getting the services as a veteran that he thought he deserved. Mm -hmm. Hope we've addressed those issues. Very nice work. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much for a helpful presentation. At this time, I would accept a uh, motion to approve the resolution put forward by the administration regarding our tax rate. So moved. Second. Second. There's a fairly long resolution there. I don't know if we need to, to read it. We've heard that. But the tax rate, I just want to say for the benefit of, of the audience, that it's 26.19 cents, which is a decrease from last year as required by the Hancock Amendment. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed to the setting that tax rate? Nope. We have set the tax rate. Policy board revisions. We have uh, three policies in front of us. Uh, Kevin, you've usually been working with these. Do you want us to take them one at a time and talk just briefly about them, or you just want to make a general motion? These are just a lodge from last month. Month uh, and they're just changing from transfer credits to fix the system of grading pieces of the different pieces of the policy work. So I think one one swoop is appropriate. Okay, you want to lodge that? Sure. I move that we approve the revisions of board policy G zero nine zero point three, G zero nine point four, and G zero nine point eight. Second. There's a second from Annie. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion over these? These were lodged a month ago and, and are now being approved. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you very much. And Annie said it earlier, and I want to echo that. I really appreciate the process we have in place to review sure. the policies, keep them current, and uh, you're, you're not the only one working, but you are a bit of a force. <laughs> Rodney's not getting off that committee anytime soon, right, Rod? No. No, personally. Appreciate it very much. Uh, our next item is to appoint uh, a ACCT voting delegate. And uh, I think we have a motion. Someone want to read that motion? Or I can read it. I will. 
Go ahead. Recommended approval of appointing Trustee Rodney G as the St. Louis Community College voting delegate for the Association of Community College Trustees, AACCP Leadership Congress. Second. Any discussion of that? Rodney, we appreciate you taking that assignment on just for the people in the audience. When you go to the ACT conference, there's a, a variety of sessions to attend and lots of speakers and so forth, but one track is really voting and, and representing the college as, as part of the governance, really, of the whole organization. So you're donating some of your time to that conference to do that. And you'll be trying to negotiate a system that can be a little complicated. Thank you for representing us. All in uh, favor of appointing Rodney? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. Our next item is the consent agenda. I would take a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Does anyone want to pull a particular item or ask a question about any of the various items within the consent agenda? Hearing none, I will ask for a vote. All in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. We have approved the consent agenda. I think that takes us to the Chancellor's report. Thanks, we Dr. are moving Larson. along smartly. We are moving right <laughs> along. Uh, maybe we can give you all a little gift of time uh, this evening, but uh, thank you so much. Uh, trustees for being here and uh, faculty and staff and guests in the audience we're always so pleased to have you here uh, my report won't be that long either but just wanted to give you a few updates on things that are going on in the college right now I thought I'd give you a quick update uh, on our census enrollment we can provide as much detail about that as you would like uh, we also have a link for innovation visit uh, coming up I'll share that with you Give you a few uh, updates from our T for Tuition tournament yesterday, and then uh, give an example of some of the things we're doing on best place to work for that strategic initiative. Why well, I, I had the opportunity to get around and uh, talk to the campuses, mainly a lot of it through the uh, service award programs we've had. I always want to publicly congratulate and thank the faculty and staff for what is now our third consecutive semester of enrollment growth and I look out and look at all the hard workers out in the audience I just appreciate all that they do um, so our enrollment increased for fall by 2.3 percent in headcount this is for the district then 1.6 percent in student credit hours um, got some information from the other colleges across the state we really are faring very very well uh, in comparison from the information that I've received so far. In particular, when you look at the campus enrollments, um, Flow Valley is up 4%, so we're really excited about that. Forest Park continues to really lead the way. Uh, another 8% 8 per, 8 increase this fall. Ever since we brought the new building online, we've just seen this trend happen at that campus. So I see Julie sitting out there and some other Forest Park staff uh, we congratulate you on that. Online education, I was declaring that as a loss um, for the fall semester because, you know, more students are, are starting to come back to on campus. Boy, did they show me, uh, the online staff showed me before the enrollment period was over. Uh, they actually broke even uh, for the year. It's still our largest uh, campus when you just look at numbers, but uh, impressive work there. Merrimack was the only campus that was down slightly, and I will say that they actually had an increase in student credit hours, so it, it kind of a net there, but uh, we're working to continue what we can do to increase enrollment at Merrimack. Then Wildwood, um, you know, they experienced a 7% increase as well, so we're excited and thankful for them. Some of the broad categories, uh, we were up with continuing students really some whopping amounts in dual credit and dual enrollment. I don't know where Elizabeth is. I wave Elizabeth. So her, Elizabeth and her team have done a great job with that. You can look at the total numbers. I thought I'd include total numbers just to show you how significant 
this is becoming as a part of the overall college's enrollment. Uh, so uh, folks should feel really good about that. Uh, we continue to work more closely with the area high schools and area districts, so that's great news. Uh, new first-time students were up. Uh, Re-entry and transfer categories are very small categories. They were down somewhat, but we made up uh, ground in the other categories to make them up. I thought you might be interested in ethnicity as well. You can see the numbers there, but actually had an increase in every category with the exception of white um, that was down slightly. But overall, uh, I think we're trending in a lot of good directions there. So good news about enrollment. I mean, we're always excited to be up in enrollment, but some of the trending we're seeing, I think is important. We're also beginning to track, and I had uh, talked to Kelly Burns about we're beginning to track enrollment by meta majors now because that's really kind of the organizational structure we're going. So you'll see future reports by meta major going forward, which will help the staff, you know, where do we focus on recruitment? Where do we focus on advertising and marketing? As we're moving toward more specific programming advertising in the future, we'll have that important data. Uh, next up is a league for innovation. So the league, uh, League staff will be here on next Thursday and Friday, and we're planning a meeting with, I believe, six of you, six of the trustees will be there Thursday afternoon. That will be a public meeting. Um, we'll uh, then have dinner after that. Then on uh, Friday, the 6th, we'll be presenting, they wanted examples of innovative um, initiatives that the college has been worked on in the last couple of years. So we have, I believe, 10. No, we have eight. We have eight examples that we'll share with them that day. And if any of you are interested, our innovation report, you can see the website address there. That That's an impressive document and uh, really appreciate. Uh, we had a team develop the document. Uh, Jennifer Arvin and the marketing team put that document together. It looks very, very nice if you haven't had the time to go through it yet. Just shows all the great things that are happening at St. Louis Community College. Uh, yesterday we had our 13th annual tea for tuition. It was actually my ninth, so I'm going to brag that there's Joanne. It was the best one I've been to, Joanne. Um, you know, as Dr. Larson was there and Trustee G was there, it was like what do you put it? It's like a carnival-like environment. <laughs> And all I can say is I started the day with $300 in my wallet, and when the day was over, I had $2 left. <laughs> so something worked. Um, yeah, they got Dr. Larson, too. I know that. Yeah. But we, we had a great time, particularly with the pro golfers that were there that teed off for us. I love that part. That, you know, keep that going. I'm sure we got some good revenue for that. But it was just a really fun day. We had 220 golfers. Um, preliminary data, although we haven't finished with the uh, online auction yet, correct? Mm -hmm. So we'll get a little more, but $117,000 that go directly to student scholarships. Uh, that's 2% over the outing in 2022. I don't know if that's a record or not, but that's, that's a record. All right, so great job, Joanne and team. We had 220 golfers there, and I've got to tell you, um, it moved right along. I think the back nine that we were on has slowed down a little bit, but it was a lot. That's a, the woodlands a lot more challenging course, at least for me. So it kind of slows everybody down a little bit. Um, but it's clearly one of the best tournaments in the region. So you folks should be proud of that. So I want to thank the foundation staff, board members, sponsors, volunteers, the Tapa Wingo staff were just gracious as always. So we had fun. Um, even if you're not a golfer for next year, you have the date yet? Uh, the 25th. Okay, thank you. Get it on your calendar. I mean, show up. They fed us to death. We have <laughs> breakfast, lunch, dinner, high times. They're always, you can't escape the food beverage carts that are going around. <laughs> so you can come and have a great time for that. They, the, the, everybody there just uh, uh, loved the time and loved uh, being with the students. Rod and Craig, I don't know if you want to add anything, but... I was going to add in my comments, but uh, to just add into your... I thought I'm the one that said it was sort of a carnival atmosphere. You know, if, I don't know how many more things you could get set up so that, you know, every time you approached a tee or, or you know, there was something to do or somebody there or somebody giving you 
you know, uh, uh, an, another beverage. <laughs> <laughs> or not, if you're, you know, some of us are very judicious in our, our decision. But it was just a delightful atmosphere. And we happened to have a beautiful day, which, which helps. But there aren't very many. These tournaments are, are popular in the region, but there aren't very many that can get 27 holes full. And you got 27 holes full and raise a lot of money, which will go to help our students the work of the foundation is so important. So, Joanne, I know you have a nice group of people who help you to include a, a committee that made some nice comments at the beginning. So, you know, one of the things that I've seen change, and I give a lot of credit whenever I bring this up to Dr. Pittman, is more and more involvement and connection to our community, you know, which can mean businesses, but it can mean people that you know, attended at some point, and now they're just kind of interested in helping, and had a little bit of all of that uh, involved in putting this tournament on. And to have it be such a first-class event, I think says a lot to the community about what they get from St. Louis Community College. So thank you and your staff very much. Rodney. Thanks, Dr. Fulton. I, I typically would, would just say that um, this was an, ex an excellent tournament. Uh, it was the first time my foursome have ever won. So you, you did know, a little recruiting, did you? Yeah, no, we, we really didn't. Um, <laughs> so that, in all the years I've played in those, that was the first time that I've been in a foursome that's won. So that's when you really, you're like, okay, this is legit now. Because normally you go and somebody comes in and they're nine, you know, 22 under, and you're like, no way. But it was a fun day. Everyone enjoyed themselves. I want to thank the staff that was out. Um, I certainly saw a number of our folks that were out helping put the tournament on, so it was a blast. We had a lot of student athletes. We did there. have that a lot really of student nice. athletes. We really did. So they were, they were out having fun with everyone. It was, it was great. Great day. For a period of time, our chancellor led the uh, longest drive contest. I passed them up. <laughs> 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 then somebody passed me up. <laughs> Those young folks got yes. up there, right, Rod? Yeah. Okay. Uh, best place to work. We uh, continue to do a lot of things that uh, our team has put together, uh, including these four broad categories of expanding executive visibility, operations and process improvement, developing people leaders, and reward and recognition. You know, two things I'll comment on today. First. Uh, we're going to be reactivating the Chancellor's Leadership Academy. That had, had ran, I think, pretty much its course prior to COVID. Uh, but since COVID, we have a lot of new faculty and staff that are at the college, so we're working uh, to put that back on again. Uh, Tanya and I actually met about that this afternoon. We're going to start to build out the curriculum this spring and then uh, ask for people who would like to volunteer, or not volunteer, but to participate in the Chancellor's Leadership Academy that will begin next fall. So we're looking forward to get that ramped up and going again. I think uh, when the first round we had, I would say probably over 200 that went through that. Uh, we had tied it to the Missouri Community College Association's Leadership Academy. M many of the graduates went on uh, to that academy, but I think it's time to, you know, with the number of new employees we have, it's time to re-energize that. And then uh, the uh, service award programs we've had at the four campuses and here at Corporate College, I got to go to every single one of them. I absolutely had a blast. I just tried to stay in the background and, and applaud. Um, you know, the presidents took the lead on it, but they would drag me up for pictures. But I tried to stay in the background, uh, but that was, those were really well attended. I, I was kind of shocked um, for Friday afternoon at Forest Park and at Merrimack, we had them on Friday afternoons and the rooms were just packed with people. And kind of just like a big party-like environment. At Forest Park, somebody was blowing a whistle and everybody was chanting and screaming in the back. But they were having, they had a really good time. And uh, we, we really appreciate our employees and all they do for us. And it's great to have these back in person now. The pandemic, we hope, won't be coming back. Uh, but we, we had a fun time. Thank you uh, for all the staff, for all your work for, you've done around that so far. And that uh, 
Mr. Chair concludes my report pending any questions. Any comments or questions? I was just going to make one quick comment. I really appreciate switching to meta majors of highlighting enrollment so it, it continues to break the silo of campuses because you know we've heard over time of what, why some campuses are getting some programs it really will shift our thinking to how we support meta majors across our entire campuses not just highlighting one campus as this program so therefore their enrollment increases so I, I like right. that switch of thinking meta majors and other pieces of enrollment trends that will help continue to make one college not four separate colleges so thank you for that thanks Dr. Martin I'll keep my uh, chairman's report uh, pretty close or short. I was going to comment on T for tuition, but I got a chance to do that already. Uh, the Merrimack groundbreaking was a really positive event, and uh, I was able to attend. I got there and, and uh, attended a meeting of the uh, Kirkwood uh, Chamber of Commerce, and some of them stayed. And it was just really a nice, very community-centered, and highlighted what the the whole process is doing, which is reminding people about St. Louis Community College, reminding them of the kinds of programs that we have available. And as these buildings come up and we're changing the, the focus in some of them, there was a really good discussion about you know what that means. Not too many days later, I went out to Wildwood to, uh, to attend a meeting, and I couldn't hardly find a parking spot. I mean, I did find one, but it was way out. And you know, what that means is there are a lot of students on that campus, and there were some activities that, that drew students there that day. But uh, when we see 7% enrollment increase, I think it's because the parents in that campus in particular are thinking St. Louis Community College is a good value. It's offering a lot of new and, and better opportunities for students, even if, you know, I, we talked to some of the athletes as we were going around the golf course, and a lot of them are in transfer programs. I mean, they're they're here because they enjoy playing softball and they're looking to go on to a four-year degree. There's nothing wrong with that. But to have them be thinking about us as the right way to, to do that is, is terrific. Wildwood uh, is going to be a completely different place when this new set, it's one building, but it's going to kind of make into a U-shape. It's, it's going to be really uh, inviting. Which kind of leads naturally to my second comment, which is again to thank uh, the staff, Elizabeth in particular, for all the work on dual enrollment. I mean, I do work for the, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed, so I'm in a lot of places where superintendents are talking. And I think you have a relationship with every high school in the region at this point. And it's almost beginning to be some competition among districts and superintendents to say, how can we best use this great opportunity for kids? Getting more students, more hours, getting them you know, thinking about and, and where we're headed now, I think we are as a college, but I think beginning to be a conversation among high schools is we're not just sending them to get college hours. We're helping them think about what they want to do with their life. What's the right next step? And get some of that experience while they're still in high school. So take the credits, but also take a direction to whatever their next step may be, which could be with us. We hope we love to have them stay on. And we've talked about this, but the demographics around high school students, you know, aren't very encouraging, right? We're an aging population, and St. Louis is no different than most of the country. We just don't have as many high school students as we used to. So for us to now be enrolling this number, well, you know, well into the 100,000 uh, plus, and to have them be thinking about us is extremely important because now we're going to have them using the the college is the next step in their life, and that's that's what we want. But at one time, we didn't really have to worry about it. There were so many students, they were kind of, you know, deciding on their own, and we just kind of benefited from that. Well, now we have to be very judicious and planned, and I think we are. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. That concludes my remarks. Uh, I think we may have a citizen who wants to address the board. We do. We have a few. Uh, first is Professor Rob Hahn. I'm Professor Rob Hahn. For 15 years, I've taught students how to make and understand movies. I'm here to share some wonderful news about past filmmaking students' accomplishments, and I'm compelled to bring concerning news about future students, because for them, the dream may be over. Filmmaking has been cut from the spring schedule, perhaps removed for all time, canceled without consult of the data showing our students' success. 
Now, time constraints prohibit detail, so I've left you a handout. But to summarize, every fall and spring for over 40 years, filmmaking has provided quality, affordable training to over 2,200 students, working class students, students of color, and first generation learners. Students acquire hands-on skills, practice critical thinking and problem solving, and translate those experiences into good paying jobs in media. Our filmmakers also produce short creative works, which become calling cards for festivals, future employers, and financial aid support for transfer to film schools they could not have afforded otherwise. Or in student terms, this means things like Ben Smith and Nick Russo run, won regional Emmy Awards and work as producer, camera, and editors for the Higher Education Channel. Sarah Benora is the senior digital producer at KMOV. Cara Vanninger is a writer-director for film and TV. Uh, Augustin Gonzalez has two Emmy Awards and works for an ABC affiliate. But now, filmmaking's canceled. And when the, our school closes the door on our low-income, first-generation students with the big dreams, we're sabotaging everything our community college stands for. Please overturn this mistaken decision to cancel filmmaking, which will cost future students jobs. Thank you. I've left you a lot more info about past success, awards, jobs, and schools that our students have transferred into. I think it was a mistake. But thank, thank, thank you, you. Thank you very much. much. Next, we have Gwendolyn Cogshell. Good afternoon, and thank uh, you for this opportunity. I'm going to be nice because my fifth grade teacher is here. <laughs> Ms. Graham is here, and I'm here because we want to stop the cancer. We think charter schools are cancer to our community. Uh, Mr. Myers, you uh, played in the band. I played in the band. When the charter school moved in, they closed in right middle school. And now that's why I learned how to play the clarinet. We don't have a band at Soda and High School. When charter schools moved in, Miss Miss Graham, Clark School, that was a trifecta. The people I met at Clark School was uh, is now my doctor, my gynecologist, the person that does my accounting, the person that uh, uh, cuts my grass. I, 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 I met them at elementary school. We have a we had a dream for our community. We don't want. Uh, believe SDL Academy coming into uh, the Williams uh, St. Louis Community College because he would be turning over in his grave if he knew this type of thing was happening in his community. They closed 20 schools in our community and we had a vision for Dunbar Elementary that held 500 students. We thought they were going to walk across the street to Vashon and then we, we, we they were going to follow each other down the street to the community center to the community college. And we now think that if this uh, this uh, um, charter school moves in there, this is a sign that this cancer is gonna spread and Vashon is gonna close. At, a, at the footprint of the NGA, why would you be closing one of the last feeder schools in the, in the community? And that's Dunbar, uh, our elementary school. So it's like a cancer with us and um, we just don't want it. We have plans for our community, and it's not for any more charter schools to open up because it just will not work with the people. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. You. Next, we have Miguel and Carla Alexander. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. So good afternoon to the board's trustees. Uh, my husband is back there. We're Mr. and Mrs. Alexander, and uh, we're longtime residents of the Jeff Vandaloo and the Central West End neighborhoods in the city of St. Louis. Well, we come today um, to inform you some very disturbing news. Um, the charter school, like Ms. Cogshell was saying, Believe St. Louis Academy is proposing to open in 2024 and operate out of our community college, the William J. Harrison Center at 3140 Cass Avenue in our community across the street from our long-standing public 
High School, Bashan High School. So I'm not sure if you all are aware, but right there in our community, we have what has been coined the trifecta. And what that is, is three educational institutions right across the street from each other. We have Dunbar Elementary that we're working very, very hard and been fighting to try to reopen Dunbar to go from pre-K to eighth grade. Across the street is Bashan High School, nine through 12. And then we have our beautiful community college, which is the William J. Harrison Center. Now, the word community is very significant to us, but we feel that we're losing the sense of community. We have 613 children or students at Bashan High School, but they're not being served in our community college, which is right across the street. We learned that the credit courses have been removed, and now the focus is on programming and partnership. So we're asking, may, that be, may, may you bring that back to our Harrison Center with 613 children plus. Another thing we found out, we wanted to rent space in there to have some community meetings, but ordinary people like myself, our neighborhood associations and organizations in the neighborhood have to have a certificate of insurance with a minimum amount of liability of $2 million. And then we have to pay $100 an hour to rent space. That's very hard. So we're just asking if you can not allow that charter school to come back. You have community members. We haven't been here. This is our first time at the Board of Trustees meeting. And we thank you for allowing this opportunity. But you have people on the ground who are out there and trying to keep the community together. So we thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your comments. Next is uh, Dr. Patrick Charles. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm Patrick Charles. I'm the political director of uh, American Federation for Teachers that represents teachers in the city. Um, I'm also here to speak on uh, the issue of believe. Uh, believe. So this issue occurred because believe was rented space at the Harrison Center, and um, hopefully everyone knows that. Uh, and so um, the location of believe being close to Vashon is the is the crux of this issue, right? Um, and um, we're hoping that you will reconsider that because, as we heard tonight, um, we are. I think we're SLPS and St. Louis Community College. We are, you know, we're all committed to um, quality public education, right? Um, with recourse to a board that everyone has voted for, right? We can go to the St. Louis Public Schools Board and um, people can come here. Um, so uh, this is, imagine for instance, if St. SLPS um, allowed Compton Drew which is right next to Forest Park, that new beautiful building that you built, um, to let Cortex, for example, um, start using Compton Drew uh, to, uh, Cortex started pumping out those courses for uh, the um, NGA, right? That, that probably wouldn't sit well for you. So we are urging you to please reconsider that decision, if, if that's, of course, your decision, to not let Believe do that thing. Um, Believe Academy um, has on their website one board that is listed in Indiana, which goes against House Bill 1552. And on their charter, on their charter application, they have another one, which is full of Opportunity Trust members, which are financially um, entangled to make that work for them. They have a financial interest in making Believe work. Um, and like the Alexander said, there is a second way. And you, I heard it tonight in your, in your meeting. Um, we can have, we, if, if we can offer courses at the Harrison Center, and SLPS students can go to that. So it's not like that space will be wasted. Um, and SLPS students need those things. So um, I'm encouraging you to uh, reconsider. Thank you for your time. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Is there another speaker yeah, on the same? Karina yeah. Robb. Hi, my name is Karina Robb. I am currently a student enrolled at St. Louis Community College at the Merrimack location. And I am here to advocate for keeping the filmmaking courses on the course registration list available as an option. I am, like Professor Han said, I'm one of his students. I have learned a lot from him. I took the filmmaking class myself in fall 2022 and I learned a lot. I am majoring in film and television. I'll be getting my bachelor's starting in September 2024 at Savannah College of Art and Design. And I wouldn't have been able to do it without the St. Louis Community College filmmaking class. I come from a lower middle class family. I am a type one diabetic. So going into community college and then transferring has been a huge help for me. And without these classes, that would not have been possible. I've also made a lot of great connections. I have learned a lot. I've gotten exposure that is very difficult to find here in Missouri. There is not a lot of film and television opportunities, as you all know. But um, yeah, and I agree with Han. I believe that it was a mistake, and you should keep it on the course list for future students who are looking into coming to community college wanting to major in media or even not just major media but take the class for their skills you can learn that will apply to all majors and on top of that um mr larson you had said about um gerald's award that you really support the fine arts and you love that and media communications is not exactly the same thing but it is very similar and if you support the fine arts in turn, you sort of have to support media. Um, and yes, I hope you consider keeping it on the course roster. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. It, it's the board's yes. policy and normal practice not to make comments back, but I, I'm gonna break that a little bit. Uh, I would ask that we, the board, find out information about the filmmaking class. I don't, you know, I didn't know anything before tonight. Uh, I didn't either. So it doesn't mean we'll necessarily do anything, but you know, I, I would like to be informed. Uh, I and I think all the board members would appreciate that. Uh, on the other issue, uh, it, I've asked the chancellor if he would address the uh, question of the, the use of uh, the Harrison Center by Believe, and that name, the Believe, and uh, he's been in some conversation uh, around a very various issues associated with that. So I'll let him address that. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Larson. So we were approached by the Opportunity Trust, who's the funder and uh, Believe High School a while back. They have a successful model in charter school uh, aligning with uh, in Indianapolis, Indiana, that aligns with Ivy Tech Community College. They're actually on Ivy Tech's campus. Uh, they approached us about, first of all and foremost, uh, their interest to work with us on dual credit, dual enrollment, and the creation of an early college academy um, in certain parts of St. Louis City and St. Louis County. So uh, we, we um, as you could see by the numbers for dual credit, dual enrollment, we engage with any high school entity, both private and public, if they're interested in aligning um, with the college on that matter, we're very interested with them. So that's really the first priority. The second, the second item that's came up, they are interested in the Harrison Center. We have not uh, signed any agreement with them. We're just in conversations with them right now. We're not really sure where they're going to end up. They've expressed an interest in the Harrison Center. Uh, so we're studying that. Uh, we would welcome the opportunity to work with Vashon uh, to create uh, meaningful partnerships with dual credit, dual enrollment early college opportunities. We have tried on many times in the past and have not been successful. Uh, we do have, uh, with St. Louis Public Schools, we do have successful relationships with some of the high schools, but we would like to create one with Vashon we have historically offered classes there for a long time. They have not made. Uh, we, we've tried credit courses there. I think part of the challenge there may be 
students uh, would prefer to go to the Forest Park campus that offers all the full services and wraparound opportunities that exist there, leaving us with, with a building. It's a beautiful building for all of you who've been there. Beautiful building on Cass Avenue. Uh, but leaves us with a question, what, how can we utilize this building effectively and efficiently in the future? So we are looking for an answer to that question right now. Uh, we would love if there would be the opportunity with Vashon to create uh, pathways there. Um, we would certainly enjoy working with them going forward. So that, that's kind of a summary of where they are. Certainly nothing's been decided. Uh, we've been in conversations. But again, we look to partner with any uh, high, you know, public high school or charter school that would like to work with us uh, with deal credit and dual enrollment. I'd just add that our very first early college, which is an opportunity for students who are in high school to actually go to a college campus and start taking classes, and they can graduate, and many do, with an AA degree at the same time they graduate from high school. Our very first experience almost 10 years ago now was at Forest Park, and that continues to be a very successful program, and that's a partnership with St. Louis Public Schools. So. We're very interested and we've certainly worked with public schools to say if you want to offer dual enrollment on your campuses we're doing that everywhere so I think there's some opportunity here uh, I will avoid more comment about opportunity trust I, I would also just add I've had an opportunity to meet the new superintendent of the st. Louis Public School District and have invited uh, her to meet with dr. Pittman and myself so that we can further those relationships to to have some alignment around the goals that we want to achieve so uh, I, I think as dr. Pittman has said it's a work in process we've not made any decisions but our goal is to get our students in dual enrollment courses so if we can lift that up at Bisham we're happy to do it and we're happy to use the Harrison Center to help us Dr. Cl uh, Dr. Larson, go ahead. I would just like to say today, the president of St. Louis uh, Teachers Union Local 420, Mr. Ray Cummings, called me, and he told me how important it is for us to listen to the citizens uh, who would be coming to the board meeting tonight uh, with their request. I told him just as Dr. Pittman had told all of you that we have not made a decision about anything yet. But I am so happy that he told me, he said, I'm going to give you this phone number to give to Dr. Pittman and ask him to please reach out and talk to the, the uh, principal at Vashon. He said, she is my former student and I assure you that if he talks to her, that there will be communication and there will be cooperation. So I am waiting for this miracle to happen. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Graham. And I had, You're reached, welcome. I had talked to Ray this, this afternoon, and he said he would pass my contact information along to her. Thank you. It was a little community dialogue. That was good. Anyone else wanting to address the board? Or Jessica? No. Okay. Board may, members. If I may, Chair, just a, a quick comment. Um, and I want to, one, applaud those who came forward and spoke to the board. Mm -hmm. um, being, a, being a member of the trustee board for quite a while, it's, it's an honor to have folks come up and demonstrate respect because you're heard then. And I've been here when that has not been the, the case when folks have come before us. So I really applaud you. Number one, I thank you for your, your courage and your presence to come and speak for the community. But number two, it's heard when it's delivered with respect. And so I do appreciate that. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Any other board members want to make comments? Yeah, my name is Annie Marshall. Um, you know, I'm a member of the community. Um, that's my that's my deal and um, so when y'all come and talk it's it's like we're a family and I really appreciate listening to all of you and I hear you and 
there's nothing that I want more than for our students to reap the benefits of the brain power that all of y'all have. Um, and that's what I'm here for. I'm here for, I'm here for the students. And um, I can't thank you enough for sharing, um, sharing your passion because my passion is for the students to thrive. Because when the students are thriving, we all thrive. And um, I'm, uh, I'm so grateful for all of you. Thank you. Any other trustee comments? I would like to congratulate you, the student, who came here because the reason this entire organization exists is for the students. So for a student to come to a board and in front of um, co our colleagues who are very educated, very thoughtful, and stand up with grace the way you did and make your case and be proud of what you do is going to go much further than this course. You should be very proud of yourself, but it's not easy to do what you did tonight. And, and I really, really want to thank you for doing that and continue doing it for the things that you have passion for for the rest of your life. And keep saying yes. I don't know you, if you realize you said it about four times. And that yes is embedded in my brain. Yes. I just want to echo about, uh, so Brenda Smith is my friend, and so she's the principal of Ashan. So hopefully uh, you'll get some connections and results that I know we've been trying to work on uh, Bashan for some time, try different programs there. And my teaching career started at Sumner, so that area is important to me as well as we started uh, working in careers. But hopefully Brenda will respond, and hopefully we can start a partnership there and um, in any of our schools, because St. Louis Public is certainly an opportunity. We have a lot of opportunity there. I think probably four to five high schools is really all we really partner with, and how I know Trustee Robinson, that's important to her as well as our very first meeting with her of just talking about how do we expand. So community members, I appreciate you coming here and can encourage uh, Bashan and others to figure out how to partner with us as well so we can make a productive area in that, because it takes everyone coming together. So thank you. I'd just like to make one uh, comment. Thank you for the members of the community coming out. Uh, it really means a lot uh, to hear that you care about your community and what happens with the students there. And we were um, elected into these positions, so we have a duty to serve our community and to, uh, to hear. And so I'm just really grateful that you came out, and I just say thank you. Good. Well, I would entertain a moment, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>